the most venomous snake on land. The rare, envenomating lizard. The tiny, toxin-wielding red-backed spider. Or the ferocious Sydney funnel web, which is the deadliest venom. The deserted heart of the Australian outback, where people seldom venture, is the hot, baked home of the most venomous land snake in the world, the inland taipan, a two-meter-long snake with enough venom in one blow to kill a quarter of a million mice. Ranging from a paler, more heat-reflecting coloration in summer to a dark, heat-absorbing brown-black in winter, the inland taipan is beautifully adapted to the desert's harsh extremes. In the heat of the summer, these muscular, small-scaled snakes will take shelter in the cracks and fissures of the baked earth, as well as in the burrow systems of their favored prey, the long-haired rat. These burrows and crevices are also where they leave their eggs. Just over a dozen of these leathery, elongated eggs are deposited and abandoned. Two months later, they begin to hatch. The juvenile snakes that slither out of their shells are already equipped with venom that is similar in toxicity to that of a fully grown taipan. They will immediately have to fend for themselves in the barren landscapes that await them. Almost half a meter on hatching, these fast-growing snakes live exclusively on warm-blooded mammals. Many of their upper body scales have a dark edge to them, creating a herringbone pattern along their bodies. The underbelly of these snakes is a creamy yellow with orangey blotches, usually only visible if they rear up in a threat display, something seldom seen in these shy and placid snakes. The plains mice and other small mammals of the arid outback can offer a meal in lean times. As their prey is usually fast moving, venomous snakes need their toxins to be fast acting, so precious meals are neither lost nor alive long enough to fight back. But these mice are not the taipan's favorite food. The population of these most venomous snakes really depends on the population of rats. Cornered in their own home, there is no escape. Death is rapid as superpotent neurotoxin venom sears through the rat's body. Its lethal effects hastened by a spreading agent which increases the rate the venom is absorbed. Nudging the lifeless rat to its favored position, the taipan aligns its meal.
opening jaws held together by immensely strong and flexible muscles, the rat is gripped by fangs on each side of the jaw, which the taipan then walks down the rat's body. Massive amounts of saliva are produced to lubricate the furry meal. Stretchy skin and small scales aid the process as the snake's body accommodates the rat. Ribs stretch apart and enlarge the body space as food moves downward. The venom that has killed the rat now has another use. The powerful digestive enzymes it contains help to break down flesh as the snake starts to absorb its meal. Despite being known as a fierce snake, with enough venom to kill 100 adult men in one bite, no human deaths have ever been recorded from this shy and reclusive serpent. Venom is not the exclusive domain of snakes and spiders. In the deserts of the southwest United States and the northwest of Mexico lives the striking and venomous Gila monster, the largest land lizard in North America. Gila monsters are not the only venomous lizards. As well as the Mexican beaded lizard, new research has found venom in some monitor lizards and iguanas. Gila monsters grow to just over half a meter. These stocky reptiles have venom glands below their teeth on their bottom jaw, and although usually sluggish animals, they can strike quickly and have an incredibly strong bite. Usually solitary animals, Gila monsters spend over 95% of their time underground in their burrows. Most of the time they do spend above ground is during spring, when they come together to mate and for male-to-male -male combat. These monsters don't so much fight as engage in ritualistic wrestling matches, which appear to be a test of strength and endurance. Each male vies for top position. Unlike snakes, the venom of these animals is not injected. Grooves in the lizard's teeth allow venom to pass through into their victims as they chew down onto its flesh. They are immune to their own venom, and these wrestling bouts seldom result in serious injuries. The skin of these animals is tough. Its beaded appearance is due to osteoderms, tiny bones embedded within the scales, a type of skin common in the dinosaurs, but seldom seen in today's living reptiles. With a preference for the rocky foothills of the deserts and the semi-arid scrublands it resides in, it is likely that the main use for the Gila monster's venom is defensive and serves mainly to protect it from coyotes and any tenacious birds of prey that may attempt to hunt it. Its own prey does not need massive doses of toxins to subdue it. 
Gila monsters only need to eat a few times a year, and when they do, they have a diet that consists mainly of eggs and the helpless newborn of young mammals. These are sought out in their underground hiding places. Although as toxic as the venom of the western diamondback rattlesnake, the Gila monster's teeth are much less effective venom transmitters than the injecting fangs of a snake, and a relatively small amount of venom is introduced in a bite. Although in this case, it wouldn't take much. As it latches on to the helpless body, Gila monsters chew to allow neurotoxins to move through their teeth and into any wounds it has created. Able to eat a third of its own body weight in one sitting, these naked pack rats could keep the monster going for months. It may not always need or use the venom that lies beneath these teeth, but for the lethargic Gila monster, its venom could save its skin. In the shallow waters of the Pacific Ocean is an animal the size of a golf ball that carries with it not one, but two types of venom. One is used on its main prey of crabs and is relatively harmless to humans. The other is used in defense and can kill an adult human in minutes. The magnificent blue-ringed octopus. Usually a pale brown in color, the iridescent blue rings that give these famous octopus their names are only shown when the animal is hunting or agitated. With three hearts and transparent blue blood, there is nothing average or ordinary about an octopus. The blue ringed octopus feeds on crabs and mollusks. These hard-bodied victims are often stalked and ambushed from behind. The powerful toxins that blue rings carry are produced by dense colonies of symbiotic bacteria that are harbored in their salivary glands. It is these bacteria that produce tetrodotoxin. One milligram can kill a human making it one of the most potent neurotoxins known. Saving this venom for its own defense, the crab will be infused with the octopus's milder toxins, paralyzing it as it is enveloped in an eight-armed death embrace. The mesmerizing blue rings of the octopus are activated by changes in its pigment-filled dermal sacs. If disturbed, threatened, or agitated, the unmistakable pulsating rings are a clear and direct warning signal. For the husked remains of this crab, there was no warning. When the time comes to reproduce, blue-ringed octopuses are characteristically dramatic. Laying around 50 eggs, 
the female carries them with her tucked under the secure haven of her suckered arms. For the few months it takes for them to develop, she will not eat. Shortly after her pea-sized young hatch, she will die, leaving her deadly offspring to carry forward her genes. In the secluded outhouses, under fences and letter boxes, under barbecues and amongst garden litter are the messy webs that hold the killing fields and the hundreds of offspring of a very deadly female. Tucked in the corner of her web, the scarlet stripe of the red-backed spider advertises her lethal capabilities. Found throughout Australia, the red back has a striking resemblance to its close relatives, the infamous black widow of North America and the katipo of New Zealand. The webs of these comb-footed spiders are impressive feats of design engineering. The silk that is strewn from spinnerets on the underside of her abdomen is used not only to construct their so-called gum-footed tangle webs, but also for wrapping food and constructing woolly egg cases from which hundreds of her young will emerge. Young red-backed spiderlings will disperse from their maternal web by ballooning, taking themselves to a high point in the surrounding foliage and letting out a fine silken line that will be caught by the wind and carry them to their own new nest site. In order to reproduce, the cannibalizing female will most likely have eaten the male whose sperm she used and continues to store for up to two years future reproductive use. The tiny, seldom seen male, five times smaller than the female, will have offered up his abdomen to the often striped female who consumes him while they meet. The venom of these industrious females is one of the most potent of all Australian spiders and is stored in venom glands just above the fangs. Despite its high toxicity, the small size of these same fangs means that often only a very little venom is delivered in its bite. While this may be more than enough to subdue their prey, only one in five bites causes significant envenomation in humans. When it does, pain at the bite site is extreme. Although there have been no reported human deaths from the red back bite since the introduction of an effective anti-venom, this anti-venom is the most commonly used in Australia, reportedly used more than all other anti-venoms combined. For these young spiders, the fight for life has already begun, and the spiderlings emerge as cannibals, eating any unhatched eggs as well as their siblings. Once their homes are established, these rather timid spiders rarely leave their webs. Most bites to humans occur from accidental contact while rummaging around gloveless and unaware outside the home.
Her incredible spinnerets contain microscopic spigots that each produce a single filament of silk. It is this which allows her to combine filaments in different arrays for different tasks of life. And so she goes on, spinning and weaving and breeding, bringing in up to 5,000 potential new venomous lives during her own lifetime. In contrast to the timid redback spider, the fearsome Sydney funnel web is more inclined to stand its ground than to run. And in contrast to the redback, it is the male funnel web that is the more dangerous of the two sexes. Funnel webs can be extremely aggressive and are armed with downward pointing fangs that are strong enough to pierce fingernails as they deliver their highly toxic venom. Different animals have very different reactions to funnel web bites. While deadly to its main prey of insects, small lizards, and frogs, many mammals are relatively unaffected. However, to humans, the venom of the Sydney funnel web is one of the most toxic of any spider. For this cricket, it will be lethal. There are three different types of bite. The first is the dry bite that contains no venom at all. The second, used mainly in prey capture, is where venom is released in an appropriate measure to the animal being hunted. The large cricket cornered under the striking stance of the spider is about to receive more venom than would a smaller fly or beetle. The multi-compound venom also serves to keep prey in good condition for later consumption. While there is no denying the severity of the venom on this cricket, it is the third type of bite, the maximal dose bite, that is the cause of much human concern. The effects of receiving the maximum dose of this spider's venom are fast and severe. Without anti-venom, human death can occur within hours. Funnel web spiders need a humid environment to survive and spend most of their days in their underground burrows. In the rains of summer and autumn, males are often lured out nightly in their search for females. Mating in the funnel web world is a dangerous affair. The female raises her body into strike pose, leaving the male the challenging task of holding her back while he delivers his precious cargo of sperm. He must do this before she kills him. If he survives the mating, either she will kill him anyway, or he will die soon afterwards. It is no surprise that many believe this burly looking creature is the world's most venomous spider. But how do we judge which is the most venomous of all? Is it the highly toxic but reclusive inland taipan? The rare venomous lizard? The deadly blue-ringed octopus? The cannibalistic red-backed spider? 
or the fatally toxic Sydney funnel web.